Hello everyone, Dan Lucas with Credo here. I hope you are doing well and welcome to day 37 of 50 states in 50 days. And today we're doing the 37th state, of course, admitted to the union, and that would be Nebraska. And Nebraska was admitted to the union on March 1st, 1867. Okay, so Civil War is over now, right? Well, some would argue it went on for a long time uh, after the, the official surrender in 1865, but... Uh, uh, anyway, uh, yeah, so Nebraska's 1867, so uh, right after the Civil War, we just kind of picked up where we left off and just kept adding states, so so pretty neat, so just kind of forge ahead. That's the way Americans have always been. So uh, looking at Nebraska, I mean, Nebraska is another state that has a lot of incentives and credits that, uh, you know, you can tell that there's a lot of... Uh, uh, Credits and incentives that uh, are part of the you know the political climate there. Um, and I don't mean that in a disparaging way. I mean that it's uh, you know they use tax incentives and tax credits as a way to better the state and and try to create jobs and things like that. At least that that appears to be the intent. And Nebraska has their credits and incentives uh, categorized either by kind of the type of credit, so they have like an R&D credit, or they have something that's like an act, and, and they'll have, uh, let's see, a whole piece of legislation, state, a whole piece of state legislation that is intended to do one thing, and it has like multiple credits and incentives underneath it. So I'm going to go through each of these categories, but know that if it's an act, that means that there's a, a very kind of uh, overarching uh, purpose of that particular act that has lots of different credits and incentives. So I'm going to probably do those last. I'm going to go, and we're going to knock out some of the uh, kind of simpler ones first, just build some awareness here. So uh, first, let's talk about the research and development credit. So, you know, we've talked about research and development credits before in a lot of videos. Here's the, here's the good news. Any state has R&D credits. Why? Because there's a big federal credit. That's why. Big federal R&D credits missed all the time. Um, why? I don't know. There's a lot of services that have popped up that do R&D credits. Why? Because a lot of money is sitting on the table um, and a lot of people aren't getting it and the people that know how to get it can make a good living on helping people get it. So um, whether it's a tax professional or even a not a tax professional, I mean, there's enough money out there that there's a lot of different people that are building entire firms only on getting R&D credits for people. So that should tell you something. But um, that to be said, Nebraska has one of those uh, piggyback credits where, you know, not every state has R&D credits along with it. They do. So basically you do the federal credits and you, then you kind of flow through and finish off with the state credit. So it's really nice. So not every state has these piggyback credits. We can kind of double dip. Nebraska does. So in Nebraska, you have double the incentive to Make sure you're not that you get these R&D credits. I don't like calling them R&D credits. I like calling them innovation credits because R&D kind of, uh, I think, plants some ideas in your mind as to what it actually is. It's more of innovation. So, you know, for instance, uh, if you, like one time that I was able to use the innovation credit was we had a kind of consultant come in and do like process mapping and help us uh, use some tech systems and stuff to implement and kind of make our business process better that was that was easily um considered innovation for the credit right and i was able to get the credit so if you if you think you might be doing something to develop your business better your business innovate inside your business any of the things you spent on it even a percentage of your salary will qualify for part of this so um you don't know what you don't know um would be my sort of tough love to you and uh uh, it might be some something worth looking into. If you have a large business, chances are you've done some spending. It's just a matter of have you done enough spending to make it worth worthwhile to go after this. Okay, enough on that. Um, Nebraska has a, an historic tax credit, and that you know we've talked about these before, and you know these are related to historical mon you know monuments or I don't say artifacts, but you know typically it's around real estate, so. You know, typically it's, uh, you know, re uh, rehabilitating buildings or uh, it might be refurbishing monuments. Anything that's kind of considered historic, if that comes to mind, something you're going to want to look at, 
course there's qualifications that you have to make, but um, you know, that being said, not every state has historic tax credit type things. So if you know that you're in a historical area or a building or you know, have anything that you know, might be historic near you, it's something you want to look at. Uh, again, not every state has this. Um, let's see, they have the affordable housing tax credit. Affordable housing is, you know, multifamily housing, and usually it's in more uh, sort of depressed areas that, you know, kind of need to be pulled up from poverty to prosperity. A lot of investors love these types of investments, tax credits aside. So there are a lot of them out there. There's partnerships you can get involved in that have this type of thing. Um, but if it's something that, you know, if it's something that you're involved in, like as a partnership, or if you're a real estate developer, something you want to take a look at, it even might be something you're not aware of that you could get uh, that would make a project profitable, you know, more profitable for you before you can start. Um, and it also attract, you know, potential limited partners uh, to do anything in that area. So there's that. Um, let's see. There is the rural development tax credit. And this one is a little, uh, let's see, this one is a little complicated. Um, it has to, this is really has to do more with like, um, kind of farming. And, you know, I know that obviously out in the Midwest, there's a lot of this type of, uh, you know, agricultural, agricultural culture and livestock, um, you know, type small business, microenterprise, whatever you want to call it. If you are in that area or know someone that is, this is a long list of tax incentives and credits. I'm not going to go through all of it. But if you are not getting tax incentives and credits and you're not aware of it, you have to be looking at this because they are giving you a lot of things to help you out, okay? And if you're not using it, you're leaving money on the table. Okay, um, let's see. There is the, let's go to the Imagine Nebraska Act. So we're talking about these before, and they have a cute little way of kind of showing this on the website. It's Imagine, and they have a capital N-E for Nebraska. So, uh, you know, I, it's always funny when you have uh, kind of tax people and stuff like that trying to be creative. But anyway, um, that's creative to me. But uh, I regress. So let's talk about the Imagine Nebraska Act. Um, it is, let's see, uh, let's go into, actually, you know what? Yeah, let's go, let's go into the, I'm going to go into the actual website and let's see this is um this has to do with it's for small it's small to large businesses and it's designed to help you recruit people and train people um you can get it in you know statewide right so it's not just a particular area like an enterprise zone or opportunity zone and you can have it's in multiple industries you don't have to be in any certain industry and they, they do have a department within the economic development division. Just kind of kind of find that if you want. Um, or it's probably, you know, it's, it's in Lincoln if you're around that area. And uh, they'll help you to actually learn more about the program, help coach you as to how to get, get the benefits, um, resources, almost like an incubator type thing. So... That's really neat. So not only you know are, do they have the incentives available, they have the kind of support and help to kind of help you to get the incentives, but also help you to flourish. So it's you know they're obviously putting these incentives and credits out there so that people use them because they want to create prosperity in the state. But then they're doing a kind of an accelerator of pouring gas on the fire where they actually help you through it as well. So I think that's really neat. That's really good. I, I wish uh, all states would do that. Um, let's see. So. That you know, there, there's there's so many things. Here, here's here's what you need to know. If you want to train people, recruit people, if you're hiring people, people are on your mind, things like that. If you're a growing business, my advice would be to go to the Imagine Nebraska program and really understand what that all entails, or even give them a phone call to help them talk you through it, tell your story and let them help you. Um, I think it would take too long to kind of go through in the scope of this video. That being said, if you want more information on it, very detailed information, I can send you some information on it that might help you. So put a comment in the video or send a note to dlucas at credofinance.com or go to our website, credofinance.com and uh, 
get in touch with us that way and we can get you some Imagine Nebraska information. But suffice to say, um, you know, if you're if you're a growing business, it's something you got to look at. Okay, growing business that's trying to recruit and uh, develop your talent. If you're not trying to recruit and develop talent, my question would be why? I mean, what do you what do you <laughs> what are you doing? What do you what are you in business for? Um, because uh, people are everything. You know, your people are your business. No matter what kind of business you're in, you know, people make all the difference. All right, let's talk about the Nebraska Advantage Act. Uh, let me pull up the details on that. Uh, let's see. So, th so this is um, this act is really it's geared toward. Uh, gosh. Really quick, let me look at the. Let me look. At, so, so you there there's you have to qualify for this. Let's let's just say that. So there are a lot of specifics into what type of business qualify under this act for different credits, and kind of unfortunately, um, there are a lot of kind of hoops you have to jump through to. If you've ever done an SBA loan small business administration loan they're awesome and tons of benefits and you can get a lot of money from them um at very low rates but you do have to go through a pretty large application process so getting involved in this program is is great um but there's just a you know there's a lot of things that go through the application process that being said once you get through the application process um a lot of it is they kind of do like a trust or verify thing too so you have to uh, sort of report back and, and, and things like that. But it, as long as you're being honest and as long as you're administratively doing what you need to be doing, and I don't think it's overly arduous, you just have, you just have to keep up with it and comply. Um, it's a great it's a great program. You're going to get tons of value. So the thing is, is that they have put this in place to really help businesses, um, you know, grow and flourish. But at the same time, uh, they want to make sure that, you know, they are stewarding this the tax money um, very effectively, and it is sort of meant to only you know only go to qualifying business qualifying businesses etc cetera, etc cetera, for a specific purpose, and they don't want to open up the floodgates and they don't want to deal with like fraud issues and things like that. So it's kind of a tight lid on it. So just know that going into it. But anyway, the Nebraska Advantage Act, you know, to kind of boil it down. It allows a taxpayer involved in a qualified business again qualified businesses. Um, kind of beyond the scope of this. I don't want to go into all that. Um, but it, it isn't like a small, niche thing, okay? There's a lot of qualified businesses that go into this. They just want to prevent businesses that wasn't intended to benefit, um, kind of take advantage of this, right? Anyway, so a qualified business to earn, I'm sorry, to earn and use tax benefits based on investment and employment growth, right? So the, the, the crux of it is that if you are investing in fixed assets, uh, equipment, things like that, heavy assets or, or big assets, um, or you are hiring people, like you're creating jobs, it's very generous, in my opinion, to how many credits you can get. And you can use these credits against income tax, sales and use tax, property tax, personal property tax. So it's not just about income tax. And, uh, you know, I, I think that if I was, if I was domiciled in Nebraska, I would do this and I would get just on the platform and then I would be sort of having this as just part of my routine like it would be just a rep another reporting requirement right so if I had an accountant or a bookkeeper or, or an administrative office manager whatever or even if it's just me or my wife or somebody in my family you know I would just kind of make this part of routine like you know you have to file quarterly returns you got to file your sales tax returns got to file your Nebraska Advantage Act you know sort of reports and you're just going to have ongoing tax benefits, right? It's almost like another source of revenue. So, um, you know, I think that if you're in business in Nebraska, you need to be looking at this to make sure that you're, that if you don't qualify, that you definitely don't qualify. Because if you do qualify, you're really kind of leaving money on the table and not just a one-time thing. It's an ongoing sort of, it's almost like an income stream. So you don't want to miss out on that. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's go back. So let's see what else we want to talk about. They've also got... Uh, micro well there's a micro enterprise tax credit act 
And let's look at... Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that I understand exactly what what they're talking about as far as because it looks like there's a, there's a ton of different businesses in here um, but anyway let's look at the actual eligibility requirements that they've listed in the website it says the individual applying must be actively engaged in the operation of the micro business with personal involvement on a daily basis in the management and operation of the micro business any individual for whom the micro business is considered a passive activity for federal income tax purposes is not actively engaged in the operation of the micro business yeah so you can't just like invest in a you can't be like uh, just an investor in a business or be like the money partner in a partnership where somebody else does the work like you actually have to have this as your full-time job so if you're a small business owner and uh, you're kind of like I'm not working your business I'm working my butt off um, you qualify for this okay probably um, <laughs> If you have any, if you're not really working that hard, and you're like, well, do I put in enough, a lot of, do I put in enough hours? Maybe this and that, you probably don't qualify. Okay. Um, you have to have at least five. You have to have five or fewer FTEs, full-time equivalent employees, at the time of the application. So that's pretty small, but honestly, those are the businesses that need help. So this is this is awesome. Um, Farmers and livestock operators, they have a specific section in here that says you do qualify. Not sure why. I must be, you know, trying to make sure that, hey, make sure that you guys are looking at this because you guys do qualify. This is not some, you know, off, it doesn't have to be an office business or, you know, something, um, you know, where people wear dress pants and dress shoes every day. Uh, they specifically also mentioned realtors. Um they talk about kind of control groups and what they're saying is they they don't want you to uh if you have basically what they're saying is that if you have a if you're in a real estate business and you have a, a real estate license that is controlled by someone else like a different broker you're not going to be considered a micro enterprise so if, in other words if you are uh, a real estate agent um kind of working on your own or you might have two people on your team they're not considering you a micro business and let's see mm. Oh, and they're also saying like like control groups would be like if I have five businesses with four employees in each business, they're considering that I have twenty employees, not not that I can you know be considered a micro business for each one. Um, that's really it. Um, so let's see. Yeah, that's really it for the qualifications. Um, the now a lot of these credits are going to be. Basically, this is almost like a subsidy for micro businesses. So they're gonna they're gonna look at things like it's a, it's a little bit like PPP loans if you're familiar with those that just came out because of the COVID um, COVID issues. It's you know you're gonna get some money for health insurance. You're gonna get some money for uh, lease office lease. Uh, you're gonna get some subsidy for kind of wages. Um, there's a lot of different areas that this will help you so basically if you qualify as again if you're working actively in your business and you have five or fewer employees you need to be looking at this you're leaving money on the table that's that's basically the the gist of it um there's too much to go into i think just in detail because i think it might just I, i'll probably miss something and it's probably everything i do talk about it's going to be too much so just know that if you're that size of business you want to be looking at this okay again so let's recap Oh gosh, R and D credits, historic tax credits, affordable housing credits. Um, those are the biggies. Imagine Nebraska Act, right? So, imagine Nebraska and the Nebraska Advantage Act. If you're recruiting talent, training talent, hiring talent, um, buying any sort of equipment, uh, different fixed assets, could even be office furniture, things like that for more white collar businesses. Those are the acts that are going to cover you. And the micro enterprise five people or less. If you if you're not getting credits, um, you're not alone. It's not unusual. That's why I'm doing a lot of these videos is because people don't know about these a lot of times. Um, and there's a real sort of, you know, the the tax the tax uh, professional um, or the tax service market place. Everybody's swamped and overworked, and they're just trying to. Uh, quite frankly, most people are just trying to get through. 
doing tax return preparation and all these incentives are out there and you're a little bit on your own unfortunately um you know not the clients come to us i mean we, we do all this stuff all the time and um we uh we actually we do uh we take on less clients and then just do more for them um for the ones that want us to help them more um as long as there's a kind of a cost benefit there but you know it, don't assume that your tax professional knows about these. Don't assume that your accountant knows about these, uh, or they might know something about them. But you know they're swamped and they're tired probably, and it's really not their fault because there's a lot of complicated things going on. Uh, this stuff is hard to keep track of. It's very arduous. Um, it can be very frustrating sometimes, and so you know you, you're a little bit of <clears throat> you got to take care of. You're, you're a little bit on your own in that respect. So my advice would be. Do your own homework on some of this stuff. If you want some help on this, on a case by case basis, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to go into all this stuff in these videos, but on a case by case basis, if you want help or if you want to have a question, send us a note, put a comment in the video. We're we're monitoring them and we will help you. Um, you know, if I if I went into every single detail of this stuff, we'd be on here for hours. But I just want to give everybody some awareness and be like, oh my gosh, I didn't, I didn't even know he had tax credits or. I didn't know that that was an area I could get some tax credits in. That's all I'm trying to do with these videos is to get people some awareness and see if it's worth digging into or doing some more research. So, all right, so that's it for this video. Thank you for listening to me about Nebraska, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.